Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. Today we're going to be talking about the composition of functions in algebra, or pre-calc. So in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, these are functions that look like this, either f of g of x, or g of f of x. Most students like to call this fog and goth, although you will never hear me say that. Or another way of writing this is f of g of x, and g of f of x. And so I'm saying this is the same thing and this is the same thing. So there's two ways of writing it. I don't care how you write it, but you need to know what you do whenever you see a problem like this. So as an example, let's say I have f of x equals 2x plus 4 and g of x equals x squared. And for part a, I want you to find f of g of x. And for part b, we'll find g of f of x, but Focusing on A right now, what do we do? So the first thing I'm gonna say is, personally, I prefer F of G of X. And the reason why I like that more is because it tells me the order. In other words, G of X is on the inside and F of X is on the outside. And so what that means to me is I'm gonna take the X squared and literally plug it into the X in 2X plus four. So what I'm saying is write 2X plus four, erase the X, and replace it with x squared. And you know, you can simplify this, I guess, because it's just 2x squared plus four and that's your answer, but that's all I'm doing. I'm just putting in the x squared where the x was. And the order matters, because for part b, when I ask you for the opposite g of f of x, well then we're gonna be putting f into g, and so first I'll write it like this. Now f is the inside, and I'm putting f into g. So in other words, I'll rewrite g, which was x squared, and I'm erasing x, and instead putting in, in parentheses, which is important, 2x plus 4. And you can just leave it like this. You can also choose to FOIL it. If you FOIL it, you'd have to rewrite it like this, 2x plus 4 times 2x plus 4. And then when you FOIL it, you end up getting 4x squared plus 16x plus 16, which is another correct answer but I prefer this first version we wrote. It's way simpler. And now we're just gonna do a couple more examples with this today, and then you're free to go, do your homework or whatever you wanna do. So for the first one, I have f of x equals 10x minus eight, and g of x is going to be the square root of x minus one plus three, like this. And my question for you is, I want both f of g of x, and I want you to find g of f of x. So go ahead, pause the video, give it a try, and when you're ready to see the solution, unpause the video. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. First, for f of g of x, remember that's the same thing as this, I'm going to be plugging in g of x into f of x, so it's 10x minus eight, but instead of the x, I'm replacing it with the square root of x minus one plus three, and then keep the minus eight at the end of f of x. And so then you can just keep your answer like this. We don't have to simplify it more than this. You can if you want, I suppose, but it really doesn't get much better than this, so I'm gonna keep it like this. And then if I want g of f of x, then first I'm gonna rewrite g again, which was root x minus one plus three, and then I need to plug in f of x right where that was, which is 10x minus eight, so I need to give myself a little more room, 10x minus eight in parentheses, and this is pretty good. I mean, this one I can simplify pretty easily because it's 10x minus eight minus one, so it's minus nine, and then plus three. And no, you cannot simplify this any more than this. If you try to, it's probably wrong, so this is good. And there, that's it for this first one. And now I've got one more question for us today. This one will be different than the ones we previously did because I want you to find f of g of one and g of f of one, but this is gonna be two new f of x and g of x functions. For this one, f of x is x plus one cubed, and g of x is gonna be three minus four x. So all it means when we say f of g of one or g of f of one, all we're saying is we're plugging in x equals one at the very end of the problem. But I'm still gonna do the same thing I always do, like for instance, first if I wanna find f of g of x, then that means I'm plugging g into f 
So instead of x plus 1 cubed, I have to put in 3 minus 4x right there where the x was a minute ago. And then I can simplify this a little bit because 3 minus 4x plus 1 ends up being 4 minus 4x cubed. And then if I want to plug in x equals 1, which I do, then all I got to do is 4 minus 4 times 1 cubed. So that's going to be 4 minus 4. So it's 0 cubed, which is just 0. Final answer for that one. And then last, if I want g of f of 1, then the first thing I need is g of f of x, which means I rewrite g, which is the 3 minus 4x, and then I'm replacing x with x plus 1 cubed. And this cannot be simplified. No, you cannot distribute the 4 here because the cubed stops us from doing that. You'd have to cube it first, which I'm not going to be doing. And so all I need to do now is plug in x equals 1. So that's going to be 3 minus 4 times the quantity, 1 plus 1 cubed. So that's 2 cubed, which I know is 8. So it's 3 minus 4 times 8. 4 times 8 is 32, so 3 minus 32. And I get negative 29, and that's the answer for that one. And that's all the questions I have to look at today. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.